Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Health Forensics and we're here to review this experiment. Now these are all Typhonbachia plants and they all get watered with different types of water. And the reason why we're doing that is because these plants are grown in a biologically toxic radio wave field. And I was curious to know which of the water types would promote the best growth in that situation. Now this experiment's been going on for quite some time. It's now January 2016 and it was started in June 2013. So it's a very long experiment that we've been running. Now you'll notice that we've got a couple of empty spaces. So this one was coffee. Coffee died. And also this is Tucson faucet water. So that plant died. And this one was diet lemonade and it eventually died. And you can see that we've got some other plants that are close to death that we're going to go through. So let's start at the worst and work our way down the line to the best. So this one was aged water from 2011. So I bottled water when Fukushima started melting down, the nuclear power plant disaster in Japan. And this has been watered with that water. And it did better than the Tucson faucet water, but as you can see, it's almost dead right now. So it's very small leaves. So next one is Diet Cola. And this one was doing okay for quite some time. It's actually one of the better plants, but then it just suddenly decided it was gonna die. And as you can see, it's, it's not dead, but it's not doing very well at all. And uh, currently has lost its leaves, although it does look like some new leaves may come up. So this one is microwave water. So standard kitchen microwave, boiled the water, let it cool, and then water the plant with it. So you can actually see that this is the first plant that actually looks like it's actually growing and is alive. So we've got leaves, but you'll see those leaves are very small and uh, very little patterning. One of the characteristics of the Dichonbachia is the patterning of the leaves and the very large leaves. Leaves typically the size of your hand. So you can clearly see that this is a retard and uh, that is unfortunate that microwave water appears to be quite toxic to the Dichonbachia. Uh, so next one is AMR, AMI water. And this is what we got. So AMR, AMI water. That is uh, water that has been exposed to pulsed radio frequency radiation that comes out of transmitting utility meters that have been deployed all over the US and in many parts of the world. And you see the plant doesn't really like it, so it's not thriving at all. So next one is uh, Brita water filtered. So this is water out of a water pitcher. And and have a little look at this. This one's doing a little bit better. So you see we've got a nice pattern leaf, but it's miniature. The, uh, the Dikembachia is supposed to have leaves the size of your hand. So clearly it's not the case. But you can see it's actually doing better than the previous plants. So this one is Wi-Fi water. So this is water that we uh, sat next to the antenna on a wireless router. That wireless router was in standby. It wasn't actually transmitting data, but it was actually transmitting its Wi-Fi signal. And this is what we got. So it was, it's better. It certainly is uh, doing better than this one over here that got the, the pulsed radiation from the transmitting utility meters, which are commonly called smart meters. So this one here, this one is reverse osmosis water that's treated with UV light, so that's ultraviolet light. And I actually get a plant that is actually starting to look like a Dichonbachia. So the leaves have gone larger and they've got the patterning. So it's, it's somewhat of a miniature Dichonbachia. 
and as I say these plants are being stressed by radio frequencies so it's not just the water that's affecting them it's also the, the radio frequency radiation that's affecting them so you can clearly see that this one is the best one that we have reviewed so far so the next one is very similar it's steam distilled water and this is what steam distilled water gives us so you can see the leaf is actually larger, a bit more patterning. We go over here, you can see that we're getting, it's maybe a half size Dicombachia leaf. So you can clearly see that it's doing better. Now all these plants get rotated every week by 180 degrees and they also, they move down in position by one place every week as well. So, so let's look at our winner. So this is tea. So this is boiled water with a tea bag. We brew a nice pot of tea, let it cool down, and then we bottle it and refrigerate it, and then we water this plant with it. So this plant's like Jack in the Beanstalk. So it has much larger leaves. You can see that they're, they're approaching the size of your hand. They're not quite fully grown, but they're, they're getting there. Uh, it's a very tall, very tall plant. i put my hand in so you can get some scale as to how tall this plant is. So it's one of the tallest plants in the home. So tea is very beneficial in a biologically toxic radio wave field for your plants. So you see strange growth patterns in your plants and uh, you suspect that they're in a biologically toxic radio wave field. It appears that giving them a nice cup of tea every week does wonders for it. So we've got some more plants down here. And these were add-ons to the original experiment and the first two were to try and establish whether it was the tea bag or whether it was the boiled water that was given the good growth in the winner of the experiment. And as you can see, this one here was getting boiled water and it's clearly retarded. So tiny leaves, it's, it's barely alive. In fact, it's probably gonna die soon, this plant. So this one, this one did actually die. You can see that we originally started this in October and then we had to switch a new plant in in March because the October plant died. So I've seen that quite a lot in my experience where you'll get a plant that does, just doesn't seem to thrive and I, I assume that the plant was damaged at the shop. There's many of the shops where you buy these plants from actually poison the plants before you get them. So it's getting very hard to buy undamaged Dyphonbachias in Tucson because the radio frequency environment's getting so high in this town. So this is what this plant has done since March 2014. So you can see a very big leaf up on the top and uh, this one's lost its patterning but it's still large. So it's almost a year in this location, maybe nine months, nine months, ten months. So you see down below we've got miniature leaves, but there's, there's a lot of them. So it certainly is doing far better than this plant. So this certainly indicates that it was the tea bag that was causing the very good growth that we got in this experiment rather than the boiled water. And this was an add-on also. This was shungite water. So this is water that is left to soak with rocks of shungite that come from Russia. And uh, as you can see, this was an August 2014 plant. And we've got much, much better growth. And I should kind of correct myself on this one. This March 2014, it's actually January 2016 right now. So this is about a year and nine months of growth that we're looking at. So sorry about that mistake. And as you can see, this is our shungite plant. So our shungite plant is doing really, really good in this environment. So I do have to conclude that I've run a number of shungite experiments and 
this one is far the best of the bunch and is showing by far the best growth. And as you can see, it's actually thriving in comparison to some of the other plants that we looked at in this location. So there is something to this shungite water that people report as being uh, very beneficial for human health. So that was a nice finding. So let's take one last look at our plants. And there we go. So that was our final results of this experiment. So we've got a wide range of growths and water types in biologically toxic radio wave fields certainly do make a difference to the way that your plants grow and probably also in human health. And if you want to find out more on this subject, you will find it in Health Forensics. I hope you enjoyed the video and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.